Today, we're gonna to be jumping into part three of the paludarium. Let's jump right in. All right, guys, so here we have the materials we're gonna need for the next few videos. Most of these products are from BioDude. I chose to use a terra firma because my animal does prefer to burrow a little bit. I have some Mopani wood, some cork bark, uh, charcoal, that's very important. Um, and that little bag, it's the BioDude's BioShot. All right, so here we're filling the tank so that we can do our water test. We need to test it before we you know, put in the substrate to make sure that everything holds water properly and water doesn't get where it needs or where it shouldn't go. All right, so unfortunately, I don't know if you guys can see it in there, but we do have a leak to the side that we don't want. But luckily, it looks like one, and it doesn't look very big. It looks like it's coming from right there. And uh, I don't know, we're gonna keep filling it up and uh, see where we end up. This is me fixing it. Uh, I basically just stuffed a bunch of silicone within the hole that I found. Um, I had marked it previously so that I could find it again. As you can see, I'm using the flashlight. Again, be generous with your silicone. Time to mix some dirt. So it's a pretty simple mix, you know, the standard. Uh, you have your, your main soil, which has some, you know, small sticks and stuff in it, and of course the actual dirt itself. And then we have sphagnum moss. Um, this will help keep air pockets in the soil, and it also helps retain humidity. Now this is beneficial to all the living organisms, and in fact, it's also great for plants. Plants need aeration around their roots. They don't like living in that packed, packed soil. Next, I add the charcoal, and this is important because um, it helps keep your soil nice and clean for your microorganisms, um, and it assists them in that. And then I add the biodegradables, which is a leaf mixture. I forget exactly which type of leaves I used in this. And that leaf mixture is food for your isopods and springtails. Now here you can see me dry fitting. I'm just trying to see how I want the tank to fit, or uh, how I want the tank to look. Now this, again, be very, like, use your imagination, get creative with it, figure, place things. If you don't like it, take it out, try different things, and uh, get it to where you like it. You can see it, it's, I, I want to show this whole process because it is time consuming. This is probably one of the parts that is just really important to get right for your own uh, likings. Now I try with all my sticks in there. I, I did pre-cut these so that they'll fit inside the tank. Keep that in mind. Um, but I take a photo, take them out. Decided I didn't like it. So we're going to try again. The reason why I didn't like it was because it just had too much going on. I wanted everything to flow nicely. I didn't want what seemed kind of like excess. Uh, you'll notice that whenever I try and place something in, it all falls to that left corner there. And the reason for that is because in nature, things tend to move in one direction. Uh, or like it comes from a single source. So if you were to look at like a root system that's coming out of the bank of a mud wall, then it would all be flown in one direction. Now, I was just showing you my photo that I took to help remind myself that of where I wanted things placed. And if you guys pay close enough attention, you can catch where I made an error in here, and you'll see it in the next clip. But all I'm doing right now is I am just layering a bunch of silicone um, where the wood is gonna be sitting and pressing the wood into it. Again, having that photo is a huge help. 
so I highly recommend you do it. Alright, so here's the error. I forgot to put on the background, and with these uh, sticks in place, I would be unable to put in the background. Uh, so these still uh, have silicone on them, unfortunately, uh, but I had to flip the tank on its side, and as you can see, all my sticks moved and are out of place. And uh, So they didn't end up exactly where I wanted them. Uh, I will adjust them again, but right now, I'm currently just siliconing the whole back pane with a bunch of silicone. I used a, probably a tube and a half of silicone for this. Uh, and the reason is because uh, the animal that I originally thought to put in here was uh, like to get behind the background in my previous tank. And I could never figure out how she managed to or just, she just did. Um, so I wanted to make sure prevent that from happening in this tank. So I press them into place as hard as I can and then I grab weights because these have a slight bow in the middle of them to help hold them down in place. Now here comes the tricky part. We ha I had to range the sticks so that they would sit on the weight um, and that they would be able to be supported. Uh, this was a major mistake on my part um, just because I couldn't get these sticks to the exact position that I wanted that I had in my picture. Um, now I got pretty dang close, so it ended up being okay, but please, please, please try and avoid this when you build your own. It, it just hurt to realize that, or in, in the moment, it definitely hurt because it was just, it, it didn't sit well, that's all. And you can see it's a pretty time consuming fix. Now the good part, all right. So uh, silicone has cured for 24 hours and now we just have to add some dirt and uh, I forgot to mention on the silicone or I forgot to film on the silicone on the sticks uh, that held them in place I actually covered that in dirt as well now the reason for that is I just wanted uh, it makes a better aesthetic again just like we would do with the foam Alright guys, so we're going to end the video right there. You're going to have to wait until next week's video to see what's next. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.